Hi, welcome to Video Doctor and in this video we are going to see an overview of Atom Mini Pro. So let's get into the video. If you look at the peripherals, we have two microphone inputs and we have four HDMI inputs and one HDMI output so you can use it for multi-view or program output and USB-C for recording or webcam output or software control and Ethernet specifically designed for software control and that is power. Let's look at the panel overview of Atom Mini Pro. Here you can do the switching part. So there are four inputs and you can do the switching part over here. And here this panel is basically dedicated for your audio controls. You can on and off an audio for a video and increase the level, decrease the level. And this is for two microphone inputs over here where you can do your on and off your microphones and increase the levels and decrease the levels. And this part over here is for picture-in-picture, picture, immediate picture-in-picture, picture, and you have four presets. And this is for transitions, the duration of the transitions over here. You can select whichever sizes and transitions you want. And then you have the DVE over here and your key here. And this is your video output. This, as you know, it has a one HDMI output. You can select whichever source you want in that particular output. If you're on multi-view, you can select multi-view or uh, the sources you want. And then we also have the recording. If you have connected the USB-C, you can record. And uh, with the Ethernet, you can do the streaming. Now you are able to see my laptop screen, panel, and the multi-view. So we get into the demonstration. So first, I'm connecting my USB-C for the Atom Mini Pro to detect in my laptop. And as detected, you can see my laptop it has an native mini pro and you can see it is connected to usb-c so you can go inside the settings in the setup you can see you can rechange the name you can see the software version all those things you can see the dhcp uh, you can configure your I, uh, ip your panel whether you want a uh, uh, program and preview so this is green and blue right program and preview so if you want like this or straight cut bus cut bus means if i'm selecting cut bus and save so it will be like whatever you press, it will come to the preview. But if you are in the preview and program and save, so first you will get the preview and then you can hit your transition to make it to program. So that's how simple and easy it is. So it's your choice, either you want to go program preview or get this. And you can see the button brightness over here. You can see there is the button brightness is less and you can increase the button brightness. So all those things controls over here in the ADAM setup. And you can jump to the software control from here by clicking this. So now the software control is completely interconnected with both the hardware panel and the software panel. So the software panel is up and running right now. And the hardware panel, you can see the third is on app. You can see the third camera is on app in the software panel and you can see the second is in preview you can see the in preview as a second so whatever you change here will change in the panel also so it's completely live either you do it here or in the panel it's going to be the same thing right and uh, to be starting you can switch the source from here as i said earlier you can switch the source from here and uh, if you want color bars in the final output, the color bars function is not available over here. So we connect in software control with the bars. You get the color bars and then you have black and you have color one and color two to generate. So these are the inputs you have with the four inputs available in the part seat. You can put any source you want. So let's say I want camera number two, say camera number two and keep your transition. You get the camera number two. So next thing is uh, we have the NP1, which is media player one. We can put any kind of image in this media player one. So I'm going to the media page. So we have stills over here. You can just select this example graphics. Any photos you want, you can just drag and drop. But as of now, I have some example graphics here. And this is going to drag and drop to any of these players. And again, I am to drag and drop into the media player. So this is very important that you drag and drop into the media player. So that it enables in the media player section of the software. So you can load multiple uh, pictures, whatever you want inside this. And whatever you drop into the media player, you can see in the left side corner of the multi view, it, keep, it keeps on changing, keeps on changing. So, so for me, this is good. 
So if you want the media player to come into the preview or program in this pattern, you can select the still button over here and select still. It will come into the preview and then you can use your traditional transition methods to bring your media player into the program field. So the next thing is the transition styles and the styles over here. So you get a lot of controls in the transition style in, in the software control down here. So here you have the basic transitions like uh, we have mix, mix is there, we can select the mix. So you hit auto, you get the auto transition and the, you can change the duration over here. You can select 1.5 and just hit, you can see it takes 1.5 seconds. You can also hit 2.0 and whatever you hit here in the software also it changes automatically. So it's 2.0 and hit auto and it goes for 2 seconds to do your mix. Then we have a dip, so dip is basically it will go to a color. As of now, it is going to color and changing it. To change that color, you can go to the palette in color generators in the first generator over here. You can select this and choose whatever color you want. For example, I choose red. And now if I hit auto, it comes to the red and goes to our not plan. That is it. And we have this uh, TV transition, which is built in, in the panel. So you can select that and you can see this push. This is squeeze. This is another type of uh, push transition, but it fades out and top faded. So these are white transitions available inside the panel. And if you want more customized transitions for your requirement, you can select your software control. You can select white and you can go to the transition area. So in the white area, you have a lot of connections available over here. So you can do your different kinds of transitions, which is available right now, just like that. And it's the same for dip and mix. So a lot of transitions are available and for TVE as well. So you can push it to the right top corner and you can push it to the left top corner. Sorry, you need to select the DVE. So for DVE as well, you need to select the DVE. Then you need to do your left or right top corner. You can change the push to squeeze You can select the squeeze into a different squeeze and you can do a different squeeze. So there are different kinds of transition styles that are available over here. The next is the keyers. So keyers is very simple and easy to put lower thirds of graphics. For example, we would put a, a live bug in the title over here. Let's, let me dig, yeah. So this is a live bug. I can use it, keep it in the picture. You can design in Photoshop, bring it in, whatever you want, you can do. So I'm just going to drag, drag and drop it in the media player one. As you can see, this is a very basic switcher. You have only one media player. The iron switches out multiple media players. Maybe this is a little big. Maybe I'll choose a different kind of light bug. It's something like this. This light bug is fine. So I'm going to the switcher. I'm going to hit key one. And nothing happens because in upstream gear, we have to select what key we want. So I'm selecting blue one. And immediately you can see I have not selected anything over here. I can select, it automatically takes some media player one. So media player one and its key, it automatically takes and the light bug is over there. And now I'm just going to hit on app. You can hit on app to stay on the uh, program window. But if you, if you want to use a transition, you can do that. You can just hit auto and you can see the light bug over there. That is upstream keyers. And if you are switching between different sources, it will go. So I need to quit this. And I can come back, remove the gear. You can remove the gear completely. And there is a DSK, which is downstream gear. So downstream gear is something that whatever you put there, it will always stay there, no matter what switching you are doing. So I'm going to the downstream gear and selecting the downstream gear media player one. So I'm just going to hit auto. It will come to the on air with an animation. And I can just keep on switching how many other sources I want whatever source, whatever color I want. So the light logo will always be there. So that is the advantage of using a down downstream here. Always you want to keep something like logo or channel logo in a watermark to be whatever it is, you can do that in the downstream here. Right. So that is about the Adam software control and the, the switches overview. And the last part I want to talk about this video output. The video output is basically 
uh, the HCV output present in the atomic flow is like an ops output. You can choose any output you want, which is going live on AdNOP. So you can select multi view uh, to see all the sources. You can select two or three. Whichever source is connected, then you can select PGM also, the final output. You can use your switching capacity capabilities to get to see the full output of what you are actually doing. So that is about Ada Mini Pro and the uh, basic overview of that. So next part is the audio. So you can see all the audio controls are over here. You can hit on, on, and uh, if you want, you can hit, you can increase the uh, level also from here. You can see when I'm increasing the level, the software is also showing the increase and decrease of the levels, right? And it's the same for all the panels and it's for same for all the microphone inputs as well. So you can control that entire thing from here itself, audio controls. And then finally, CCU. CCU is only for Blackmagic Design and that is for another video. Okay, now you can see I have connected my Ethernet with the Atom Mini Pro and USB-C for recording. And I'm going to come to my atom setup. Go to the atom setup. It is connected via Ethernet for controlling. And in output, you can see I have the output quality. This is live streaming. The recording is something different to you. But when I adjust my quality hypertech medium, you can see you can record now in 251. Again, if I bring it down, you can record up to six hours. And if I bring it down to streaming low, you can record up to 31 hours for 58 gigs. So which means basically your streaming quality directly depends on your recording quality as well. So you need to keep in mind and then apply your recording things. So this is all about the basic basics of Ada Mini Pro. If you want to get started, it will be easy, easier for you. And if you have anything to say or any comments, just fingers. Or if you have anything to say, just comment on us. We will get back to you.